Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your rear brake pads on a 2014 Toyota Camry. And in this case, we're just gonna change the pads. We're not changing out the rotors this time. So the first thing I like to do is grab a screwdriver or a pry bar and put it in through here to pull on that and pry the caliper piston back inside the caliper. That will push the brake fluid backwards through this line up into the master cylinder. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look at that master cylinder, make sure we have enough room to push that fluid backwards so we're not gonna make a mess. Now here's our master cylinder. You can see that we still have plenty of room. We're well below the max. If I push that back in, we're not gonna overflow and make a mess. Now, a lot of people ask me if you need to take the cap off before doing this. I found that there's really no difference in the force who push the caliper piston back in, whether I leave that on or take it off. So any air that's in here still can really escape through this little vent here at the top. The other thing is the brake fluid does absorb moisture, even moisture in the air. So a lot of times I will not open this so that it doesn't expose the brake fluid to new air, which it would have more moisture. And that's what causes it to go bad. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that cap on while we push that caliper piston back in. Now, a lot of times a screwdriver will work fine, but you can use a small pry bar. You can get it in through this little access port or access window and just try to catch either the edge of the rotor or the edge of the pad, and then just pull that towards you. Just steady pressure pulling that towards you, and that's going to pry that caliper piston back in. Sometimes we can shift it over here in between the pad in the back and the rotor to make sure that we get it pushed all the way in. Now we can loosen and remove these two bolts here. These are the slide pin bolts. These are a 14 millimeter socket or wrench. Just break those loose. A lot of times this little slide pin will spin as well and you may need to put an open end wrench on that. Look, that looks like that's also a 14. And since I have this, I'm just gonna zip these off real quick. Now these rear calipers are super lightweight, so I don't worry too much about hanging them up. And in this case, I'm just gonna put it right over here on the front of the rotor, and that'll be fine and out of the way. And then we're gonna pry out the old brake pads. These have the little wear indicators or wear sensors on the bottom. I don't know if that's where they're supposed to go, but I'll go ahead and put them in the same place. Now these little clips here, these hardware abutment clips, these are supposed to be replaced every time. The kit that I got came with the wrong size. Even though they came with two different options, they do not match up to the same width. So what I'm gonna have to do is clean these up and reuse them. I wouldn't normally do that, but that's what I'm gonna have to do this time. So I'm just gonna carefully pry these off and then we're gonna clean those up on a wire wheel and then we'll have to reuse them. Now I'm also gonna hit this area here with the wire wheel to clean that up because we do wanna make sure that those clips fit nice and flush and we don't want any corrosion or rust causing those to lift. Make sure you wear some safety glasses if you're gonna use a wire wheel like this. All right, that should be good. Now we're also gonna pull out these slide pins and clean and regrease them. These are kind of sticky. Let's just wipe them off. Get them all nice and clean and then a lot of times i'll put them in once or twice more just to try to get any of that excess grease or debris out of there if these were really bad you could take this bracket off and clean them out this is the grease i'm using here this is caliper grease it's great for slide pins and any of the contact points that are not the friction surface this is made by versacam been using this one lately and it's working well it's this nice pretty blue color too which i like just pop that back in now when you put these back in, you just want to make sure to squeeze that boot a little bit, which will let any of the air burp out. You just want to make sure that there's not uh, outward pressure because that can cause your brakes to drag. But that's nice. That's spinning freely. Yeah, compared to this one, I can barely turn that one. Go ahead and pull this one out. Yeah, that's really stiff. Let's see if we can just kind of twist that and pull it out at the same time. And then just pull back on that boot little rubber boot. I think this is the one that has the little rubber bushing in the end. Yep, you see that? Sometimes those will swell and get bound up, especially if somebody used a different kind of grease or the wrong kind of grease. Yeah, that's really, really stiff in there. Well, let's just get some new grease on there and see how that does. We don't want to use too much. It'll just push right back out. But I think that's the, about the right amount right there. Let's see how that will work. Just kind of twist it as we push it back in. Hopefully we can get past that little bushing part. Maybe not. See, the bushing wants to push up on that slide pin. Let's try it again. If we can't get this... Oh, there we go. We got lucky. Yeah, that's going to work out just fine. Just remember to squeeze that to burp out any air. But yeah, that's, that's going to be just fine for us. That's nice and smooth now. 
I was afraid maybe that bushing had swollen too much to be able to get that to go back in. And sometimes that does happen. In the past, I've actually cut those little O-rings, little relief cuts that they already have. I've just kind of cut those a little bit deeper so that it would fit back in. But as long as you get it to go back in, you'll be all right. Now I'm also going to hit this little spot right here on each side with a little bit of that same caliper grease. Now this is, this is not really the conventional way. This isn't so much a lubricant. This is more of a protectant. Just be careful not to get any on the rotor. And this is just to protect that surface from rust jacking where the rust gets underneath and causes that corrosion. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna have to reuse these. I hate doing that, but I already checked all of the widths. What's going on is this width is slightly more than the stock one. You see, this is the replacement. I really tried. I tried to make it work, tried to fit that in there. Even though they gave two different options, they're still not working. Kind of a bummer to have to reuse these, but I'm gonna try my best to clean these up with a wire wheel. Luckily, they don't look too pitted and uh, we'll just have to get them cleaned up and reuse them this time. Just remember to wear safety glasses if you're gonna do this. And be careful, watch your fingers here too. This is a really soft brass wire wheel, so it's, it's pretty mild. Most kits are gonna give you a replacement hardware. So you won't have to worry about doing this, but in this case, they're just it's just not the right hardware. Also just gonna put a little bit more of this grease on there to make sure that our pads don't bind up on those. And same with this one. I'm just gonna put the grease on ahead of time before I put it on. Less chance of hitting the rotor. That should be good right there. Yeah, see those these ones these old ones just go right on i really really tried with those new ones they just were not lining up for the pads now they come with these little clips these ones were on the bottom i'm not sure if that's where they're supposed to go but i'm just going to put these back the same orientation which was at the bottom and i do like to put a little bit of this brake grease here on the edges here and also on the back where the caliper rides on the pad that little bit of grease just seems to keep the brakes nice and quiet. It seems to help eliminate some of the noises or vibrations that cause noise. Just do a little bit on this one here too. And then just pop that in. There we go. Don't use a lot of grease on that. You know, some people don't use any at all and that's fine. It's up to you. Now this has got some nice shims. Those are rubberized and that does help cut down on some of the noise and vibration transfer, but a little bit of that brake grease there does seem to help. Now, before we put the caliper back on, I'm gonna clean this up and you do wanna inspect the boot. Looks like this one popped out a little bit. Sometimes you can get lucky and just kind of massage that to go back in like so, that looks fine. And just a little coat of this grease on the inside edges here where it makes contact with the pad. Again, just seems to help keep those nice and quiet. All right, and then when you put this back on, it's important that you don't twist the brake line. Make sure that you have it the same orientation that it was, like so. And then we can put these caliper slide pin bolts back in. Torque spec that I found online for this is 20 foot pounds. And you're done. Now just remember to step on the brake pedal several times, which will push the caliper piston back out, pressing that pad or these pads up against the rotor where they need to be. You can see right now we still have some play in there. It's important that you do that. But when you're doing that, do not press the brake pedal all the way to the floor. That can damage the seals in your master cylinder. Go ahead and just press it several times about halfway till it feels firm and that'll be enough to push that back out. After you do that, it's important to pop the hood and double check the fluid level in your master cylinder and make sure that that's all topped off and ready to go. Now again, just a quick pad change video, but that's sometimes that's just all you need. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up some of these same parts and tools as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.